Hello, I'm Andy McDonald from Queensland Museum Network. I'm here at Cobb Co Museum in the factory and I'm going to talk through a project that we're working on for an exhibition. So a lot of people ask us how wheels were made in the olden days and they say how were things done prior to electricity. So we thought we'd do a project to make a wheel entirely by hand. Now it's a bit of a challenge but we do have the tools and we've researched a lot about the, um, the techniques um, to use these tools. So first of all we bought a log, um, pecan log. It's very similar to hickory and we know that hickory was used widely in wheel making, particularly in America. We've cut it up using this tool, which is a cross cut saw, a two person saw. And we've cut it into sections that we've later split. So, splitting up these sections, we've used wedges and a large mallet, which I've made. And from there, I can break out various size boards. The next stage is to put the board down and use an ads. An ads is used this way and it takes out all the rough, the split wood is fairly rough, very splintery in fact this timber. Um, but I've managed to pare it down with the ads and I've come up with this finish here. And from there we move on to a, a tool called a scrub plane. Now a scrub plane is different than a normal plane. It's curved this way and it's fairly short. It's used for hogging off a lot of timber. It's used after chainsaws, for instance, and it's used on the angle across the timber. Once I've got it close to size, I finish off with a smoother and get the board parallel. So this blank is now suitable for the next stage which is making a fally. Now the fallies are the curved part that go together to make up the circle of the rim. They're usually made to a template and I could fit two of these fallies in this one blank. The next stage is to cut these into a curve. Now we've researched this and the tool used was called a fally saw or a frame saw. Again, it's a two person operation, but it can cut a curve. And this is one that we've just cut as an experiment. So after we have sawn this out, we need to smooth these surfaces. This very nice tool called a Stanley 113, a compass plane or a circular plane. We, this is in the Queensland Museum collection. Lovely old tool from about predates 1900. So this was used to smooth these surfaces. The next thing is the spokes. We split these from that timber again, but we're using a tool called a fro and a beetle, which is just a large lump of wood. So basically these rive through the grain to produce billets that we can then make into spokes. The shaping of the spoke is done with a tool called a draw knife. These are pulled towards the user and the clamp is called a shaving horse, a foot operated clamp. And they've smoothed out finally with a spoke shave. This one is a curved spoke shave and we can get the spoke relatively smooth. Not machined, but it's smooth. Now they are bashed into the hub, which is the centre portion. We've sawn this off a log. All, all wheel hubs are basically turned from a log. Um, in this case, it's a fairly small log, but it's iron bark, very, very good grain in it, very strong, very solid. And a lot of work by wheelwrights was done with an ax. This, this one is a side ax. You can see that it's there, and also the handle's curved. So these were used to take off the excess wood. Now, how were they finally turned? Now, I'll show you a normal hub. The inner side is wider than the face side. We turned ours 
on a hand crank lathe. Later in the Industrial Revolution, lathes were turned with flat belts from an overhead shaft, and that was powered by a steam engine. So how were they done before steam engines? They were using a thing called a great wheel. Now these existed in the 16 and 1700s, and they were used for a lot to drive a lot of machinery. It involved having a very fit apprentice to turn the wheel, the great wheel. And it was run by a belt onto the machinery. And then we could lathe that down. So that's our output there. So once we have our hub turned to satisfaction, we need to measure it. This is our measuring device used for wheels called a traveller. We take an accurate measurement of the circumference divide it up by the number of spokes and then mark it out like that to get even spacings and then they're chiseled out with a mortise chisel. Mortise chisel is very robust. This is only a small one. A socket usually, a socket uh, onto the handle and these are forced through the wood. It's hard yakka. Takes um, three quarters of a day maybe to chop a wheel out in iron bark. And the corners are neatened up with a thing called a bruz, which is a corner chisel. And that will give us neat mortises here. And then we have all the spokes poking out of the hub. And later on, the fallies are put on to create the circle on the end of the spokes. Now to do that, we have a couple of tools. This one is called a pointer or a, um, a bell auger. And that brings down the spoke to look like this. Yeah. And that will then allow us to put the next stage on, which is a tang cutter or a hollow auger. Again, on the brace. And the felly then goes on to two spokes like this. I hope you've enjoyed watching um, progress on this latest project of ours. For more videos behind the scene, go to our website, Museums at Home.